you didn't already guess from our channel and the Diet Coke short that I wore for the first year, I'm a huge Diet Coke fan, but I've cut like 75 pounds and uh, holidays are over, so I gotta jump back on, so this is my last one. But I was thinking where it's 2020, thinking about goals, the new year, one of the questions I get asked all the time is what are the new tech trends? So I thought perfect timing to tell you what I think the trends are for 2020. What's up everybody? It is so good to be back finally. I'm excited about all the really cool content that we have coming your way. One of the reasons we struggled to put content out the last year is that I always have to wait for my team and my team's actually out installing and programming systems or doing graphics for the website and I'm not very good at setting this stuff up. I thought I had this really cool shot that was set up and you're gonna be able to kind of see the office behind us that's being all remodeled and then I realized that the big light reflections like right over here like yeah. Anyway, so uh, I think Pete McKinnon and Maddie would give their student a fail, but I tried guys, if you ever see this, I did try. We'll get better as we go along, but on to 2020 and I guess beyond, what do I think is gonna happen? What are the tech trends that I see? And to be specific, these aren't like specific products you should run out and buy. These are like movements, changes that are happening, kind of like philosophy about how smart homes are trending in 2020. So you're not gonna rush out and go buy a bunch of widgets after this conversation. This is just kind of to show you the direction that I think the industry is going. And this is in no particular order, okay? Just as first ones that come to mind. So the big one that comes to mind is voice control. And voice control, I know everybody's gonna be like, Matt, voice control isn't new and it's not, but there's definitely some Trends. We've got a company called Joss.ai that is really pushing the envelope and showing us how far voice can go. And this isn't a conversation about whether or not Josh is better than Alexa or Google. That's not my point here. My point is simply that they're pushing the envelope and as they're pushing it, it's showing us that voice can be all the things we want it to be and they can get rid of the pain points. Here's a couple of big examples that I think are helping us take voice control to the next level. The first is compound commands. So the way programming works in a smart home, if you have a scene, a scene is like a collection of individual commands that execute all at the same time. So let's say we're doing a good night scene. We might have lock the doors, um, close the shades, turn off the lights, turn off the TV, okay? And when we run that good night scene, every one of those commands is gonna execute. Now, if you wanna do a voice control, no big problem. A scene's already been programmed, use your voice, it's gonna execute that command. But maybe a few days later, you wanna change the scene. You're like, you know what, I've used this for a couple of weeks, I want the kitchen lights to go down first, and then I want the great room lights to go down, and then I want some music to come on to kind of fall asleep to for 30 minutes. Well, that requires more programming. You're gonna have to call your dealer, or if you know how to use like when then with control four, or like Savant's user interface, you might be able to make some of those tweaks yourself, but most clients are gonna call their dealer to come back to rewrite that custom scene so that your voice can call it and execute that command. With compound commands, it gets rid of all that. So instead of having to have a scene pre-written, whatever you happen to be feeling that night, you can yell out. So you can come in and be like, you know what, Josh, turn off my lights, kick on the music, shut down the TV, lock the doors, and set the thermostat. And it's gonna instantly execute all those. The next day you can come in and be like, Josh, shut off my house and play my music. And that's your good night scene. It's a compound command, but it doesn't require you to call your dealer and get more programming. So that's huge. Now, the second thing is that the commands are much more forgiving. So traditionally with voice control, you have to execute commands exactly. So if I have a music scene in my kitchen and I'm gonna name it, so I'll say play kitchen music. If I say anything other than play kitchen music, it's not gonna execute and that's really frustrating. So you might walk in and say, hey, play music in my kitchen and it's not gonna do anything. You have to actually say play kitchen music. With Josh, again, it's very forgiving. So you can walk in and say play music in my kitchen and somebody else can come in and say play favorite music and either command is gonna execute in the kitchen which makes it way more enjoyable to use your voice control. One prediction I'll make, it's probably hardly a prediction, but in the 20s, voice control will become the leading user interface, meaning the way that we access the tech in our homes and give the tech commands, but it'll be responsible for 70, 80% of our user experience, the other 10 to 20% being our, our mobile phones and touchscreens on the wall. Whew, I gotta take a break. Okay, so next up, there's a lot of chatter in the industry and out of the industry about wellness rooms and health rooms, the way technology improves the environment and our well-being inside of the home. I'll talk about this a little bit at the end of the video in kind of our honorable mentions for 2020. I think it's a little bit premature to call that a trend for 2020, but it is definitely happening in isolated situations. Two of the places where I see it trending right now is lighting control and shade control. So lighting control has been around for a long time. There's nothing new about it, but it's becoming increasingly accessible. So whether you're using something like Lutron Cassetta or a more sophisticated panelized solution like Homeworks or Control Force panelized lighting, we're seeing way more lighting control than ever before. 
It used to be that like one out of 10 homes asked us for lighting control. Now almost every estimate we sent out the door has some kind of lighting control estimate in it. And nine times out of 10, it is a panelized lighting bid. So there's a huge trend with lighting control. But more specifically, I'm talking about low voltage lighting. So most of you are probably familiar with like the Philips Hughes light bulb and you have all the color control. Okay, low voltage lighting gives us a similar benefit through all the fixtures in the home. And where this is really important is with our circadian rhythms. And if you're unfamiliar with that idea, it's basically our body's clock. It's why we wake up in the morning, it's why we get tired and sleepy at night and wanna to go to bed. And lighting has a major impact on our circadian rhythm. So like in the morning when you wake up, we can set your lights to be this, this brighter, wider light that's gonna kind of wake you up, get you excited and energized, your creativity going for the day. And then at nighttime when you wanna wind down, we can make it a really warm light that's gonna mellow you out and get you naturally feeling sleepy so that you'll sleep better. And then of course, if you're having a party and you just wanna have a disco ball going, you can have all different kinds of colors in the house. And we're seeing this trending a lot more now for all the reasons I've described, but especially because of its effects on health and wellness. Now it is still really cost prohibitive. That's why it borderlines on honorable mention, but we're seeing enough of it right now. I would say it's a definite trend for the 20s. Once in a while, we have a client that wants to do the entire house that way, but more often than not, what we're seeing is a client wants to do their master bedroom or their kitchen and great room, or maybe their office. So they're just picking two or three rooms in the house that matter the most to them to maximize their time and their energy. So lighting control is gonna be huge. For all the same reasons, I think shade control is gonna be a big trend. Shade controls historically been like a luxury item. So you have kind of tiers of smart homes and you have, most homes have audio video and they may have some lightweight lighting control like some Z-Wave switches, but shade control was sort of reserved for kind of the ultra wealthy, I guess, if you will. And that's really changed in the recent years. Costs for automated shading solutions have come down tremendously. And there's just so many more applications available. You've got things like uh, My Smart Blinds, I guess it's now called Tilt. But if you've got Tilt Shades, you can get those. It's very inexpensive. And you can put them on existing shades that were never wired and never meant to be automated. And just like that, you can automate them. If you've got shades that have like the little silver chain, they've got things you can put on that that automate those chains. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to take your shades and automate them but for all the same reasons that I see lighting control taking off, I see shade control becoming a huge trend. We're already seeing it and feeling it. I see shades being huge in the 20s. The next big trend that's already happening and we're seeing it is a move back to a centralized system. There was a period there with all the IoT devices, you know, Ring.com and Nest thermostats, whatever, where people were sort of decentralizing. In fact, a lot of people were putting in systems that didn't have a master controller. They're just like, look, I'll have 20, 30 devices in my home, each with its own app, and I'm fine with that. And we're finally getting to a point where there's some smart home fatigue, meaning that people are a little bit fatigued by all these different smart devices, some of which integrate, some of which don't integrate, and they're more and more in favor of having a centralized system, one control to rule them all. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not gonna buy multiple third-party devices like Ring Doorbell or Nest Thermostat, but what it means is we're gonna deliberately buy devices we know can all be controlled inside of one system. And that's very much a trend that we're seeing it's being talked about a lot online right now. We've actually done surveys with our own client base and they've confirmed that that very much is the trend. And I think it's gonna to continue to move that direction into the 20s. I expect us to see it come back in media rooms. There's just a lot of attention right now on media rooms. I'm not talking about the traditional dedicated theater, but I just think media rooms are becoming much more accessible and much more exciting again. That doesn't mean you have to have a projector and screen, although it definitely can. It could just be a huge flat screen or if you've got the budget, the new Samsung wall. But the technology is making it so much easier to have a really, really good media experience in any room of the house. A big old flat screen, really good audio. You've even got furniture now from companies like Sonique and Fortress where it looks like really posh, really modern living room furniture. But when you're ready to watch the movie, it morphs into a theater chair so that you can really enjoy that theater or that media room experience. And we're seeing this again and again and again in homes where people don't have a traditional media room or like a dedicated space, but they're putting a big budget into their viewing room in that great room or that living room or that bonus room over the garage and making it a phenomenal viewing experience. I expect that to just increase in 2020. All right, one of the last big trends that I see coming is that the relationship with your dealer is changing. So you used to contact your dealer to program and install your system. That was basically the only reason you called your dealer. Today, dealers are becoming much more like a tech consultant. And this really isn't new. Commercially, this is how it's been done for years. Big college campuses or commercial campuses, big commercial structures would reach, reach out to a technical firm and the firm would design the technology for that building. And then they would work with the client to help them find local dealers and integrators who had the expertise to service that system or the technology in that building. We're seeing a similar shift with residential systems. 
A lot of people ask us why we were in Florida doing a job in Boca Raton. It wasn't because we were the best dealer in town. Like that's certainly not the case. In fact, if you followed us on social media, every single day I was on the phone with one of my favorite dealers in Miami, begging him to hold my hand through the process because everything about the construction was different, the concrete, the steel studs. I had all kinds of comp questions about how to do the shading in that environment. And he had to walk me through it every single day. So it wasn't about being the best dealer. The reason we were out in Florida is because we basically became the technology consultants for that home. It was a whole lot of moving pieces. We worked with the architect, we worked with the design firm, we worked with the electricians, we worked with the home builders, we worked with the plumbers. And we were constantly in meetings, helping to coordinate all the different moving parts in that home that had technology that was affected by the smart home. And that's the direction that the industry is going. There was an article in the industry earlier this year, and I don't remember the exact title, but it was something like, is plumbing finally entering the smart home space? And basically the gist of the article was that kind of the last holdout is finally coming into the smart home world. Your fixtures, your toilets, your showers, your bathtubs, everything is getting into the smart home play. And as that happens, it's to a point now where your relationship with a dealer is changing. Sometimes you're gonna have a dealer that actually designs installs and programs a system, but you're gonna find dealers out there that only design the technology for you. And then they make recommendations about dealers in your market that you can trust to go and install and service the system for you. It's gonna be a lot like having an interior designer, but it's gonna be a designer for the technology in your home. Again, this is borderlining on the honorable mention. We're doing a lot of this. We have clients all over the nation where we're solely the design consultant. It's early. I'm not saying that everybody's going to see this, but you're going to start seeing more and more of this in 2020. And in the decade, this is going to become commonplace. And honestly, my opinion, even though it may be self-serving, is that this is a good thing. For years, your dealer and the trades that you work with, like your designers, your electricians, your home builder, there's a little bit of this because there's some overlap and people get a little bit territorial and the end result is less for you, the client. And as we start to integrate better with designers and different trades in the home, it's just gonna help give you a better, more well thought out product that has the design elements you want aesthetically, but also the performance that you want when you actually sit down to use it. And that's a win for everybody. Last up, some honorable mentions for the 20s. I already hit on wellness rooms. I actually think that it's early. I just think that it's sort of an abstract concept. I don't think most people are thinking about a wellness room or buying a wellness room, but there's a lot of chatter and a lot of conversation online and people are starting to warm up to the idea and get excited about the idea. Certainly they're interested in having technology in the home that's going to benefit the way that you feel. But the idea of buying a wellness room, I think is early, but we are gonna see it in this decade and you're gonna see much more about it in the 20s, so I give it honorable mention. But like I said earlier, what we are gonna see is isolated cases like lighting control and shade control, maybe even music where you're using these different pieces of technology to improve the way that you feel inside of your home. And then my last honorable mention is digital art. This has been around for a bit. I think it's price prohibitive. I think that's the biggest reason we don't see more adoption with it. But, but I do think that we're getting to a point now where we're gonna start seeing more of it. Samsung's Frame TV helped us a lot with this. You, know, you can put that TV over your mantle and people have no idea that it's a TV. It really legitimately looks like a picture on your wall. What's cool though about digital art is that you can really extend it into other areas of the home. There's no reason why you can't put a Frame TV or something similar in the entryway of the house or hallways as you walk up the stairs. And you can easily have big portraits or favorite pieces of art displayed on those TVs and you can change it anytime you want. And kind of a cousin of this is your digital projection or your projection mapping, right? And again, it's cost prohibitive, the cost of the projectors, and then just how do you hide the projectors effectively inside the room? But what it can do, the impact it can have, again, on the environment of the home, and it just change up the color and the mood whenever you want to is really, really cool. If you haven't seen it, our CES video that we did this year has a really cool demo from Barco Projections where you can see the way the projector is changing the environment and the mood in that home. Again, price prohibitive. I think it's a little bit of an abstract concept concept so it's new but we are getting requests about this and questions about this i think it's going to trend all throughout the 20s that's it that's my two cents on what i think is going to happen and going to be trending in the year 2020 we'll see i'd love to hear what you think what your ideas are what you think's coming leave it in the comments and if you're new to the channel and haven't already do us a favor and hit that subscribe button we appreciate the support more than we can say